Today's news is going to be explosive. Starting with Red Ripper 7000's release, Nvidia gives their gaming cards a new feature. These GPUs are blowing up. Nvidia's upcoming cards are pathetic, and Ryzen 8000 is coming this year. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we actually have official news on Threadripper 7000 CPU's release. As you can see down here, well, this actually comes from a Billy Billy video, which is right here, but in it, Asus's general manager, Tony Yu, revealed something interesting. In the video, they actually compare the Xeon W93495X, this is Intel's newest Sapphire Rapid CPU, this is their flagship model, and they compared it to AMD's Threadripper Pro 5995WX. And while in the video both chips actually trade blows with each other, Intel's Xeon CPU consumed way more power. Now, for more consumer-based CPUs, that typically isn't a big deal because you're not trying to make a profit. But given these are pro models and aimed at professionals and professional workloads, consuming way more power is a pretty big deal. With that said, as you can see here, the platform apparently does have its own advantages. But, and this is the really interesting part, you can see Tony states that those might be a thing in the past later this year when Threadripper 7000 HEDT CPUs come out on the TR5 platform. Basically, he's confirming that AMD's next-gen Zen 5 based Threadripper 7000 HEDT CPUs are coming out later this year. Now, I believe there were earlier rumors that actually stated that it's expected I believe in September, so given the fact that he's talking later this year, it definitely sounds like that may have been correct. And what's interesting about that is that at least from what we've been hearing recently in rumors, there's a pretty good chance that the core count will be going up. I've heard upwards of something like 96 cores, so a wild core count, especially given these are not server CPUs. These are, of course, the HEDT market. But first, with new CPUs and GPUs coming out, make sure you're ready with Meld Alerts, the completely free sign-up that sends you an email when new PC hardware is releasing. Because let's be honest, keeping up with all the new PC hardware releases can be tricky. And don't worry, I'll only tell you important stuff like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Plus, I'll send you great deals as those come out as well. That way, you won't have to worry when new PC hardware is releasing. So yeah, it's completely free at MeldAlerts.com, and it only takes you a couple seconds. So make sure to check that out below. And next up for today, I have some good news for gaming GPU owners. For those who follow the industry and not just say the gaming side of things, but server side, more professional side, stuff like that, you know that Nvidia likes to hold certain features back, even certain things that they could easily implement with little to no effort, just so you're more or less required to purchase their higher end GPUs. Of course, this is things we've seen from both AMD and Intel as well, so it's not exactly something new, but what is new is seeing a company actually lift some of those restrictions. As you can see right here, it states that Nvidia has quietly removed some of the concurrent video encoding limitations from its consumer graphics processing units so they can now encode up to five streams at once. As it states, this move will simplify the life of video enthusiasts, but... Unfortunately, they didn't completely upend the restrictions because NVIDIA's data center grade and professional GPUs will continue to have a massive edge over consumer products as NVIDIA does not restrict the number of sessions on them at all. So we're talking five versus effectively unlimited. Of course, with that said, removing any restrictions at all should definitely be applauded. As they state though, NVENC encoders have not changed. You can see, for example, NVIDIA's latest 8102 graphics processor based on Ada Lovelace features three hardware NVENC encoders, which are enabled on the RTX 6000 and the L40 boards for workstations, but only two are active on the RTX 4090. So that isn't going to change. They aren't going to somehow activate the third one in the 4090. So you're still stuck with only two, but the actual software limitations do seem to be lifted. And next up for today, yet again, we have a video game that's literally killing GPUs, just blowing them up. 
they're done for, they're dead. At least that's what it looks like. If you remember a little while back, there was actually people who were breaking their RTX 3090s with Amazon's new MMO called New World. This time though, it's actually from Diablo 4's current beta right now. As you can see, gamers playing the Diablo 4 beta are slowly reporting instances where the game is causing custom RTX 3080 Ti GPUs to die. According to this WCCF Tech article, it states that most reported cases to appear to happen with the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, though various models from Gigabyte. Apparently, one EVGA 3080 Ti was also killed as well as a single case of an RX 6900 XT. Now obviously a couple of these GPUs with just one single case does not mean necessarily that this is a widespread issue for those GPUs. And given we're only talking say one of AMD's cards, it may have just crapped out no matter what, at least eventually. Though it likely isn't a coincidence that it crapped out while playing Diablo 4. And I will say that uh, Jay's Two Cents actually did a video on this and I really like some of the stuff that he said. For one, and some rebuttals from people is basically that, well, it, the game allows infinite frame rate. So yeah, they're gonna be killing the GPU. But the problem with this is that it still shouldn't kill it. Even if the GPU is working at its 100% max, giving it all it's got, it still shouldn't just crap out like this. Not only that, but in this article, they actually do suggest um, to, here it is, to manually cap your frame rates to potentially avoid this issue, except even they say due to the randomness of the event, it may actually not stop it from happening. And with that said, the open beta is actually here. I believe it's today. So just like Jay's Two Cents, I would recommend holding off until we have more information about this. They almost certainly could release a patch for it. So yeah, really bad news, but once again, it does seem to at least mostly be 3080 Ti GPUs, though there is one 6900 XT. And next up, we have a really interesting story from Video Cards, where they actually quote T4C Fantasy, which if you've been following this channel, oh, and if you haven't, definitely make sure to subscribe if you love getting PC hardware news. But if you have already been following the channel, you know that he's actually one of the maintainers for the GPU database for Tech Power Up. Either way, he actually tweeted this the other day, stating that the RTX 4060 Ti will have a base boost clock of 2310 and 2535, with the premium AIB cards up to 2685 megahertz. Now, he has since edited this to state that it could be the regular 4060 or the 4060 Ti because the Gigabyte leak seems to change things as it has an 8106 GPU. So there is a chance that it is in fact the regular 4060, but regardless for one, I highly doubt that I'll show you why. And second, things still just look horrible for Nvidia. As we go down here, I really like what Video Cards did with this. They actually showed us a chart that compares the FP32 raw compute of all of Nvidia's newest GPUs, including some of their upcoming ones like the RTX 4070, based on what we've heard from rumors. And of course, you know, these are mostly based on rumors, but at the same time, pretty much all of them have been incredibly accurate, especially when it comes to the 4000 series, so I'd be really surprised if they ended up being wrong. Also, some of you will likely state, oh, well, single precision compute does not perfectly translate to gaming, and that is true in a sense. It actually is fairly good at telling you how good the performance is gonna be even in games when you compare it to the same architecture by the same company. So comparing the single precision compute of say the 4090 versus the 7900 XTX absolutely does not tell you how good it's gonna be at gaming. Basically it's how well the architecture utilizes said performance as to how well it ends up being in games. But when you're comparing it to the same architecture, it can be fairly decent. And as you can see right here, I believe that this pretty well correlates to numbers that we've seen of gaming performance. And as you can see, things are just getting really, really bad. We have right here, obviously the 4090, fantastic GPU. Nvidia clearly went 
all out to give their top end card the absolute most performance likely to beat anything that AMD could come up with. And it certainly seems like for the most part they succeeded, but that ended up making the 4080 look really bad. You can see that there is a massive drop from the 4090 to the 4080 and no, you're not going to see this big of a difference in FPS, but you definitely do see a really big difference and much bigger than we usually do see. Moving down, we have the 4070 Ti, which drops down quite a bit. Then we have the 4070, which is a really big drop, a much bigger drop from say the 4080 to 4070 Ti. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but it's a Ti, but there's still a really big drop from the 4080 to the Ti card. And then an even bigger drop, once again, we're comparing it from the Ti to the 4070. If we compared it to say the 4080 to 4070, it's a gulf. It's massive. And then if the 4060 Ti is at 22.1, which given how the increments are happening, I would be very surprised if that was actually the 4060, though at the same time, that isn't core count. You can see that the core count is still going to be significantly lower than the 4060 Ti. So obviously the clocks aren't going to be that different and therefore it's not going to be that big of a difference regardless. But Assuming that this is in fact the 4060 Ti, yet another fairly big drop. And then as video cards is sort of predicting here, the 4060 will likely have something around 15 teraflops, which is quite a drop from the 4060 Ti. And lastly for today, one thing that is definitely not disappointing is that at least according to Gigabyte, it looks like AMD's next gen Ryzen CPUs are coming this year and this wasn't some kind of slip up or anything like that you can see down here that they actually announced a couple of new servers based on ryzen cpus specifically zen 4 cpus but in it they actually confirmed that the successor to the ryzen 7000 lineup likely ryzen 8000 is apparently coming later this year year. You can see down here that this is actually what they said during the press release. And once again, this is from a press release. So this isn't some slip up or anything like that. It says, quote, even though these new products are entry level servers, CPU support does not end here and the AM5 platform is supported until at least 2025. And here's the big stuff. In addition, the next generation of AMD Ryzen desktop processors that will come out later this year will also be supported on this AM5 platform. So they're basically trying to say, hey, I know that these are effectively entry level servers because they're Ryzen CPUs instead of server chips. The platform is actually gonna be supported for quite a while, including their next generation cards, which will come out later this year. So yeah, definitely, at least in my eyes, this is huge news. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Ryzen 8000 potentially coming this year? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always with this style video, I do apologize for rambling. I actually had a lot of stuff that I really needed to do today. So I thought I'd do a talking head video, especially because a lot of you do seem to like them. Either way, as always, have a great day.